What's going on you guys? It's Resto and in today's video we're going to be going over the 19 twink mage. In today's video we're going to be going over the gear, the best in slot choices, as well as the alternatives until you're able to obtain those best in slots. We're also going to be going over the talents, the typical builds that you guys are going to be using throughout your battleground experiences, and I'm also going to be going over some tips and tricks to kind of help make your guys' PvP just a little bit smoother, and just to help you guys out in the long run. Um, without further ado, let's get right into this guide. Alright, so welcome to the 19 Twink Mage. Um, not sick anymore, so feels good, man. We're a little bit more energy today. It's going to be a little up in the voice now. Not that I'm not all groggy and stuffed up inside. Um, without further ado, though, this was recommended by you guys. So like I said in every other video, um, usually I take the first person to comment. If you guys want to see something, be sure to drop that comment down below under a comment that I usually put, like usually right here. Um, and I kind of just carry on from there. Um, this is halfway into the guide making series. With that being said, I will start working on the pre-planning guide. Everything you guys should really be looking forward to in terms of making a 19 twink, how to pre-plan it, how to get what you need, how to do what you need to do without surplusing level 19. Um, and it's been a big request lately, so I'm going to start working on it. It's going to be very detailed. I'm going to try to include everything that I personally do um, in terms of making a 19 twink to kind of help you guys out as well, because I know some of you are a little bit lost in the sauce. But without further ado, though, let's get into the guide, starting with the gear. Um, so with this mage, there is a few other pieces that you guys can roll with as well. So I will be going over everything that you guys need to know. <clears throat> Typical, you go with the lucky fishing hat. Um, slap that labrum on there. The fishing hat comes from phase four in the fishing extravaganza. So make sure you guys look forward to that if you are watching this pre phase four. But if you guys are watching during this phase four or on a private server in general, um, go ahead and slap this and slap that on top of your fishing hat and you should be good to go. Moving on to the second one is Scout's Medallion. This is going to be the only neck that you guys are going to be wearing no matter what the class is since it's the only neck that is available to you guys unless you want to rock a gray piece as a necklace. Um, rumor has it December 10th is going to be the launch of Warsong Gulch. So that is something definitely to be looked forward to guys because now you guys are going to be able to grind every piece that you guys need in terms of the cloak rings and the neck. You guys do need to get honored which is about uh, I believe it was 50 per cap, 150 per win, so that's about 55 wins if I'm remembering right from the other videos. Um, so that's that's about honor to get 9,000 rep, guys. So if you guys are on a solid win streak, it shouldn't take that long, um, depending on how long you guys play, how many games you guys play. So if you guys are like a casual player, I, I would assume it would take about a week just to get honored. Shouldn't take long, or Sun Gulch, um, depending on the games. If there's a bunch of twinks in there, it shouldn't take that long since everyone's trying to get honored. So, moving on to the shoulder is the Talbar Mantle. This is a um, quest reward item that you guys get from the Wailing Caverns. The last boss, the Murloc, drops a glowing stone. It's going to take you through a short series of quests, an easy obtainable ch uh, shoulder piece that you guys can get um, on the journey of leveling 219. Um, like I said, I will be going through everything that you guys need to know. Um, I also had some comments earlier. Um, I believe it was last video or the video before that of someone mentioning I should include the best races as well. That is a good idea. Um, although I've already made a bunch of guides, so there's really no point of me starting to do it now. So I will also include that within the pre-planning guide as well, guys. So don't worry. Everything you guys need to know will be in there. Um, but if you guys haven't noticed already, the videos that I have made are races that I personally would roll. Um, just just being me these these are races that i would roll as if i was playing the class so if that kind of gives you guys a little bit of a lead of what to do um you guys could base it off that otherwise you can wait on the video and i will go more in depth on which race to pick and why those races are good compared to others um but moving on to the cloak is the engineer's cloak this is a very nice cloak to snag i believe it's from the stone talon mountain nice little quest chain put five resistance on that that's pretty simple when it comes to a mage so 
nothing really too complicated there moving on to the chest piece is the tree bark jacket um, typically you put uh, all stats on there uh, the plus four stats now you could do that personally I would do the 100 health on the chest reason being as a mage you guys aren't gonna have as much defensive as you guys think you have if you're from retail you don't have blink you don't have all that fancy you know maneuvers to kind of help you guys kite so with that being said you guys are gonna be a main target but you're also gonna be a huge annoyance so what you need is health for that durability to kind of help you guys stay up but you're also maintaining that and selecting spell damage to hit um, pump out that damage as well so what you want to do is throw on health on there and kind of keep your health points up just a wee bit so you guys aren't an easy um, one-shot target you guys are wearing cloth so you guys are gonna be crit a lot um, moving on to the bracers is the mind thrust bracers typical bracers for a caster you're gonna throw nine stamina on there no questions asked nine stamina should be the main bracer enchant of all twinks that you guys make so be sure to slap that on there it is a very cheap enchant it should be nearly one of the first if not minor speed um, for the enchants that you guys are gonna be using Moving on to the gloves is the Mage Fist Gloves. This is another common piece that you guys are going to be using throughout your cloth wearing twinks. You're going to go ahead and slap um, plus 20 frost damage on there. Now you could do fire damage as well. Personally, as a mage, there's two specs you guys are going to be rolling frost and fire. Yes, you guys can run fire and fire is absolutely deadly for those who say it's not. They're very wrong. Frost, it, or not frost, fire can be extremely scary if used properly and geared right especially in a pre-made fire mage twinks can destroy guys trust these crits are nuts we're talking 400 plus crits so frost damage on there if you guys are rocking this spec which is mainly for frost um, now moving on to the uh, other pieces that you guys can be rocking as well this is the mage gear for the fire so I'm gonna go ahead and go over all of this stuff at once and over this stuff at once as well so these are two different um, kind of builds that you guys can go with and they all have their own purposes moving on to the belt is the Keller's girdle this is really the only belt you guys should really be using in terms of any kind of caster um, so this is gonna be mainly for the intellect obviously um, so you're gonna go Keller's girdle should be really simple to get I believe it's like 30 gold on Feralina. I don't know about other servers. Like I can say, I can't vouch for those servers. I've never been on them, never seen them, never even leveled on them. So for those, you guys just kind of want to snipe that auction house a little bit if you guys find one a little bit cheaper. I just know Feralina, typically the amount, unless it's a Shadow Fang, um, it's, it's about 50 gold. I know a lot of the pieces like uh, Scouting Gloves or the Monkey, for example, they'll go for like 20 gold. Nothing too crazy. Um, something that's very easily achievable. So it is quite pricey um, in a sense if you really think about it if you're buying all of your pieces at once you guys are probably spending at least 200 gold just on gear um, if, I, if I'm really gonna think about it here um, maybe 300 gold so I mean it is a bit pricey I mean 20 gold does add up so it's cheap at first if you're getting just one piece but you guys know the, you guys know the gift um, moving on to the pants are the dark weave breeches very simple to get as well You guys can also snipe these off of the auction house. They shouldn't be that expensive um, They are a very common drop in terms of the 19 twink farming I'm um, gonna slap 100 HP on that that is the same Libram that you're gonna be putting on your helmet the Libram of Constitution Go ahead and do the quest chain um, Well, that quest chain turn give the people uh, the items that you guys need in terms of making the Librum and then you also need to give them the gold so that way it can be converted and they can apply it to your twink unless you guys have two accounts you big ballers out there um, they go ahead and slap that on there as well uh, moving on to the boots is the sanguine sandals four on four now I thought this was common sense but apparently to some people it wasn't now guys when I mentioned boots like this it's like there's obviously other pieces for example there's the pagan shoes of the eagle you can also get these for stamina for intellect slap minor speed on them it doesn't matter it's the same stats um, when I'm mentioning these gear I'm giving you guys gear you know personally that I would go for when I go for gear personally I like to go for gear that's unique that's different it's because making a twink it's all about the swag you know if I'm gonna be honest here it's been like that for years it's always been like that making your twink has always been about being unique being different standing out that's what a twink is you see a twink and you're like holy shit look at that dude's gear and you know that's what it's about when you see sanguine sandals you're like oh wow dude those are cool because those aren't something that everyone really wears but when you see peg and shoes of the eagle all oh, like oh that's that's okay peg and shoes of the eagle that's cool whatever you know like there's those peg and shoes of the eagle peg and shoes of the bear peg and shoes of the monkey like you know there's 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 shoes like that that you know that don't 
don't really stand out. But when you see this, when it's its own shoe and it has its own name and there's no branches of it, that's that's a different piece. And that's stuff that I like to personally go for. So when I mention these gear, obviously there's other pieces out there. According to this other guy, I don't know what I'm talking about. I shouldn't have mentioned that. Blah, 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 blah. End of story. So with that being said, I'm ending this video. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. So moving on to the uh, rings, we're going on to the Seal of Rin. This is Alliance only for the Horde. You guys are going to be going for this uh, Seal of Sylvanas. Both of these are very easy to obtain. Um, very easy to plan out as well. So make sure you count this. Obviously, Alliance, you are being favored on this ring. Those stats are nuts. So good job for you guys. I'm, I'm still very jealous. So those are going to be the two rings. No swapping out. Um, moving on to the second ring is the Veridan Bing of the Eagle. Make sure you guys are going for three out of three on this. Three stamp, three intellect. It should be a very common ring to find on the auction house as well in later phases. I know as of right now, there's not going to be many gear on the auction house for you guys to steal. So you're going to have to farm most of it yourself, which is quite unfortunate. But I want to say... and near mid phase three you guys will start seeing a lot more twink gear a lot more people are going to start farming they're going to stay away from that uh, world pvp phase and everyone's going to start looking um into other things in the game so veridan band of the eagle is going to be your guys's other choice um obviously moving on to the trinkets it's your insignia of the alliance or horde or the arena grandmaster these are going to be two main shrinks obviously if you guys cannot obtain the agm not quite yet you guys are gonna be going for the minor recombobulator that is for the engineering you guys should get that as you're going for your um, flying tiger goggles or the green tinted goggles I should say since you guys can't get the lucky fishing hat so the green tinted goggles with the Libram on it should be your replacement for that um, in the process of getting that you guys should be able to make the minor recombobulator so that is what your trinket is going to be moving on to the weapon is the evocators blade you're gonna slap 30 spell damage on that you guys are gonna want to get that max damage out there it's gonna be nice and juicy um, and then you're gonna get the furbolg medicine pouch for that stamina durability now you guys can get this and then when you guys are going for like pure dps when you have that support you guys can also add the um antipodian i believe is the antipodian rod i believe that's how you pronounce it um very nice for damage output for both fire and frost um so go ahead and get both of those for um both sides depending on what your scenario is so you guys can do that max um, stat wise um, in terms of your build now moving on to these other builds this right here instead of going for the mind thrust bracers You can go for the pagan bands of stamina put plus seven stamina on there You're gonna go for the night watch short sword You're gonna go to the pagan shoes of the stamina the blood ring and the pious leg wraps these right here um, this is your stam set guys this is if you guys need to FC and you need to pick up a flag and you need to run it across the field or just cap it in general unless you need to pass it off to your main flag team um, depending on type of premium that you guys are running this is your stam set this is what you're gonna be running um, if you guys need to swap to that set um, if you're gonna go into the night short sword you're gonna put plus 22 intellect on there um, this is going to be the replacement instead of the spell damage you're gonna want to put intellect to kind of maintain your uh, intellect uh, Outbeat because you're going to get putting this set on you're going to decrease your intellect a little bit But with this it's going to increase it back up and then you're going to gain at plus 200 health So just imagine what you have right now plus 200 and then the plus 220 intellect is going to bring you to about 2100 intellect I believe it was when I last checked so you guys can have a nice little even even out there But you're not going to do much damage. It's more for you know durability survivability getting across that midfield and being able to pass it off to someone that needs to be FC um, Obviously the pious leg perhaps aren't available Available to the horde this is an alliance only item so once again you guys are being favored in gear um, horde there really isn't any alternative with this so the 8 stamina 7 spirit the best option is just to stick with the 4 stamina 7 intellect 6 spirit um, dark weave breaches so go ahead and stick with this and put this on if you're alliance so gratitude to you guys for doing that now moving on to another so if you guys don't want to run frost and you guys want to go fire this is a very good build right here um, you're gonna go with the no casting gloves you're gonna slap plus f uh, 20 fire damage on this increases your damage and healing done by magical spells by a f up to six um it doesn't seem like a lot there's no stats on there but that's not the point when you guys add up all this gear plus the sp uh, talents i'm going to show you guys you guys will understand why this gear matters when it comes to frost you guys are gonna be doing some pretty nutty damage when it comes to fire um, 
but make sure you guys have a pre-made or if you're just wanting to dick around that's fine too um it's best if you use it as a pre because you're able to free cast a lot and you can pump out a lot more damage moving on to the belt you're going to get the green weave sash of the fiery wrath that's plus nine fiery spell damage you want to make sure you go for the plus nine i know there's a plus seven i know the plus eight you want to look for the plus nine this is going to be your belt of choice instead of the keller's girdle you're going to slap the green weave sash of fairy wrath on there this is for max you guys don't have to go with this belt this is optional you guys can still stick with the keller's girdle if you guys just want that optimal damage um it goes with the pants as well these two pieces right here is just to increase and make it more of a fire uh glass cannon so you guys can really it's up to you and whether or not you want to swap to this but if you have that pre-made you're able to free cast and you're able to do your own thing these two pieces right here can make your damage prime so go ahead and get the shimmering trousers of the fury of wrath 11 fire spell damage make sure you guys look for the 11 and make sure you guys look for the plus nine these two are what matters and then obviously you're going to put plus 100 on there to kind of maintain that health as well and then for your offhand instead of running the fur bug medicine pouch you're going to go for the pulsating hydra heart this is increasing damage by fire spells and effects by up to seven this is very nice, very complimentary to the fire spec. So go ahead and rock these four pieces when you guys are run, uh, when you're wanting to rock out the um, fire spell. Obviously, there's this as well. It's the plus six. This is nice too. If you guys can't get the uh, pulsating hydra heart, but the reason why I'm going for this because it's a plus one into the fire damage and it gives you plus two stamina. So it's a nice little nice little bonus right there. But you guys could rock this too if you guys can't afford or find on your server the pulsating hydra heart. Um, if that just doesn't seem to be able to drop for you guys, um, that is a good alternative that you guys can use until you guys are able to get the pulsating hydra heart. Um, other than that, that is pretty much all there really is to gear on a mage. Uh, mages, they're really like the the oh shit class where you guys want to stay away from, but they're also, you know, a class that you guys can easily counter. You know, it's like if you encounter a mage and you come across them in your path, you're like, all right, where's my rogue buddy? Is my partner near me? Like, because you always want that backup partner right there in case you are um, being slowed. But believe it or not, a mage can actually be easily countered if played right. Like a warrior can easily counter a mage. Um, there really isn't much of a defense mechanism on the mages that they can really use to kind of help them out. So a warrior can actually easily counter them if that warrior uh, knows what they're doing or if that warrior doesn't really know what he's doing that much but still has an idea and has a support then easily that mage is going out of the scenario. So, mages, you guys got to be careful. Know how to play your class, and you guys should be solid. But other than that, don't expect to be a god within the battlegrounds. You guys are strong, but you guys aren't the strongest because you guys can be easily taken out. So let's take that in consideration when you guys are playing your class. Um, moving on to the talents, guys. Arcane isn't really going to be touched. You guys can mess around with this and whatnot, uh, but there really isn't much to Arcane that you guys are going to be touching. This is going to stay gray. Just pretend arcane doesn't even exist because you guys aren't going to be rocking that. It's mainly going to be fire and frost. With frost right now, I have five into improved frost ball. This reduces the casting time of your frost spell by 0.5 seconds, which is very nice. This is used in endgame as well. Twinking is going to be taking it up as well. Um, moving on to the second bar is the frost bite and three out of three gives your chill effects a 15% chance to freeze the target for five seconds This can be very clutch. This is like a second nova for you guys if you guys are casting um, Rank one frost bolt, which should be definitely used a lot if you guys don't know what down ranking your spells means what pretty much means you guys are going to be leveling up your tune and within that process of leveling up you're able to rank up your spells so there's rank one two and three um in terms of the frost bolt at 19 so rank three is the highest you can go now down ranking is you can use a rank three frost bolt that is very nice if you're going for max damage but you can also go for a rank one frost bolt and what this does it's a minimum cast time just to get that slow out there it's not really for damage it's more for a cc effect to slow them down get what you need to be done done with so that's something you guys need to look up upon if you don't know what down ranking your spells means. So Frostbite, 3 out of 3, and then you're going to put 2 out of 2 and improve Frostbolt. This reduces the cooldown of your Frost Nova spell by 4 seconds, which is very, very nice. Very nice to do. Now, you guys can play around with the Frost. Obviously, you can put something to Ice Shards, increasing the critical select damage bonus of your Frost spells by 20%. This is very nice as well. Um, obviously, there's all kinds of things that you guys can look into, like reduces the chance the opponent can resist your Frost and Fire spells by 2%. Now, this is a very nice talent to roll with. If you guys know you're going into a pre-made that has a lot of warriors um, and shamans they will be running the arctic buckler which is a frost resistant spell um, this is something that's very nice almost all twinks are going to be running plus five resistance on their cloak as well
well so that plus five on top of a plus five that's a plus 10 total in frost resistance so they are going to be resisting your spells guys so if you guys want to look into something like this you guys can but if you want the best optimal for your class um this typical l build right here is going to be your nice little go-to in terms of frost moving on to fry our fire um there's really not much to fire but you guys are going to be doing uh, plus five out of five into improved fireball this reduces the casting time of your fireball spell by 0.1 which is going to be in total of 0.5 um and once you put all five into there it's just like the frost guys when it goes into improved frost bolt same effect just for fire um instead and then you're going to put the other five into impact which gives your fire spells a two percent chance to stun the target for two seconds obviously that percent chance will go up but the seconds that it'll be stunned will stay the same this is quite similar to frostbite guys instead of five seconds it's two seconds um i believe it's 15 I am actually it might go up to five seconds as well. Same eff uh, effect as frostbite. So frostbite and impact, and same with improved fireball and improved frostbolt. They should have the same effect as it goes up. So these are the two spells that you guys are going to be going into when it comes to fire. Um, like I said, um, just like with uh, arcane, there's really nothing you're really going to be exploring with. Um, I mean, you could go with the flame throwing, but that really doesn't make sense. But if you guys want the most optimal for fire when you guys are rocking all of this gear, improved fireball and impact is going to be your go to. Um, and with frost, you're going to want to go with the improved frost bolt, frostbite, and improved frost nova. So, really, not much um, that's really here. I can do so if I were to go plus five plus five so it's a plus 10 chance to stun the target and a plus two so like i said the target stun stays the same and that goes up to plus five so just like improved fire spell um impact is going to be slightly different from frost bite so that's something to look into so it gives your fire spells a 10 percent chance to stun the target for two seconds so this is your basic talents that you guys are going to be going for. Um, like I said, typical L build. You guys can explore with ice shards as well. So if you guys really want, um, this does, this is this is nice, but it's not a necessity if that makes sense. So instead of doing um, plus, or you can do plus five. Obviously, that's going to be your go-to. And then you don't have to go all the way into this. You could do a plus two into frost bolt, and then you can put the rest into ice shards which is very nice to have for that critical stack damage. Um, but like I said, if you guys don't want to go with ice shards, you can just make the, the solid L and you guys should be set. Um, moving on to some tips and tricks. I'm going to show you guys some macros. Um, there really isn't much macros to a mage at 19. Um, obviously, there's other macros you guys can use as well, but that's more advanced stuff. I'm going to show you guys the most generic stuff that you guys are going to be using. Um, typical stuff for people that are like you know starting out. Um, if you guys are more advanced, you guys should already know pretty much what to use. Um, you guys are just looking out for gear. But anyways, um, this is a grenade macro. For when you guys are making your engineering, you guys are going to be making some grenades as well. These grenades do stun the people just like the iron grenades. The only difference is you have to stand still instead of being able to move. That's the only counter con to our grenades at 19 compared to endgame. So you guys are going to be making this one. This is very nice to have. I use this a lot, actually. Um, it's what it does is you point your map. Uh, mouse cursor wherever you want you click the macro and the grenade without even showing the little circle it'll just start casting it right away where your circle is you just gotta have a visual if you guys are experienced with throwing grenades you should have a visual of the uh, aura duration of the grenade and the radius of how much it'll affect so just put your mouse cursor wherever that is and you should be set to go um, another one you guys can use a mouse over poly this mouse over macro can be used for just about anything it's not just for polymorph all you gotta do is change polymorph you can change it for lesser curse if you guys want to do remove curse um, this is very nice to have for a lot of uh, spells amongst all classes so this is your typical mouse over spell all like I said all you really have to do is change polymorph to whatever spell that you guys want to use um, be a curse could be a polymorph it could be a frostbolt it could be a fireball literally whatever you want just change the word into the spell that you need um, this is a self bandage macro so if you guys are um, targeting somebody for whatever reason to put a buff on there and you need to heal just pop this macro and it'll bandage yourself um, just change bandage name to whatever bandage that you have that you're going to be using um, typically you want to use your max, max rank bandage since that's pretty much all you should have left in your bags so whatever the name of the bandage that you're using just replace it right here and right here and then you'll be able to bandage yourself without having to personally target yourself and then bandage I know you have to do that a lot in turn certain different scenarios so this is a good macro that you guys can use 
for that purpose this right here is a wand macro very simple you guys are like why do i need this well this macro right here will make it auto so it's like you just click it once and it will auto wand constantly you don't have to keep clicking it you don't have to do anything you just click it once and it'll auto shoot constantly without you having to do anything and so you obviously want to stop wanding you just move and it'll stop wanding but this macro right here is very nice to have so you don't have to click clicking keep clicking wand a little let's butcher butch i can't talk so we, we're butching our words here but uh this is a nice little auto cast macro for your wand um, other than that, that's really all there is to a mage. There really, must, there really isn't much to it. I can't speak right now. I don't know why. But, um, like I said, as a mage, you guys aren't really that aggressive. You're more of a uh, counter-casting class. You guys are mainly there for CC, crowd control, um, all that fun stuff. So, don't really think you can play mage like you can in um, retail where you're just all over the place owning people granted you can do that you can be that powerhouse but if you are going to play that play style you have to be very cautious of your surroundings and really plan out how you're going to engage these targets because you got to also got to take in consideration i cannot talk right now um those rogues that are stealthing around that are going to be coming up behind you ganking you ambushing you and all that fun stuff so it's just something you guys got to really think about um being a mage, there is a lot that goes on into it, believe it or not, especially in pre-mades when you guys are rocking these things, um, there's a lot that goes into it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all you guys really need to know about a mage. There really isn't much to it. I'm pretty positive. I know I say this all the time. I didn't leave anything out. If I did, be sure to drop that into the comment section below. Nobody's perfect, guys. Um, I'm doing this for you guys' um, knowledge. So, if there is something that I did leave out. Like I said, drop it down in the comment section below. And if I can confirm that is true, I will go ahead and slap that into the description as well. Uh, I've done that into the warrior video. Um, there's some weapons I left out. Um, but for those who are always watching these guides, though, I am working on a very big project. So if you guys are into um, looking at a massive thing for twinks um, be sure to go into my discord guys i will be posting it in there that'll be for you guys to see at all times um, i'll show you guys a little slight kind of little preview of it right here um, basically what i'm doing guys is putting everything that you guys should really need to know um, about every single class right in front of your face so that's something i've been working on for a very long time right now making sure everything is perfect make sure there's no kinks on this that i'm doing um so if you guys want to see that you guys are interested in that and you guys don't want to keep going on youtube and shit and looking up at all this nonsense um it can be all right in front of your face so you guys don't have to look all over the place um so i'll be right there it's going to include um gear it's going to include tutorials it's going to include like guides and how to do whatever it is that a twink needs to do to be successful so ever it's like it's like an all-in-one shot um right in front of your face so be sure to join the discord if you guys are interested in that other than that that is the end of the video guys um we had a little bit more energy in this thank god we came over that sickness that was pretty rough um, but other than that, if you guys did enjoy this video drop it a like if you really like to give it a favorite commenting is free as well as subscribing it's been resto guys see you guys next time